Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here and I'm back with... Matt Easton, Scholar Gladiatoria. Weird Weapons is back and I'm back down at Matt and Lucy Easton's uh, skirmish event. So it's basically where loads of people get together and they fight doing all sorts of stuff. Uh, you asked earlier on, you said, is this one that you found yourself or somebody showed you? Yeah. You showed me it at Christmas. Did I? You did. And I looked at it and I went, I don't believe that. Are you ready? Uh, if it was Christmas time, I might have been drinking the sherries, and I have mean? no idea what this is. It was on I, the 27th. Oh. Right. Okay, it doesn't feel like what All I yours. expected Unwrap. it to Unwrap. feel. So I was expecting this to have a thick shaft inside, <laughs> and it doesn't. I honestly have no idea whatsoever what's inside this. You have been drinking. I can see it. It's got a knob at the end. What's this? Feels like a pommel at the end. Oh, it's like that great unboxing, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no, I can't get it out. Oh! That's a beautiful pommel. Oh, it's that! I'd completely forgotten about that. Oh, that's mental. It is bonkers. Right, this is, this is the thing you said to me, that'll never work. <laughs> well, not only did I say that that wouldn't work, that oh. is some sort of weird chain flail thing. So you've got a weight here which weighs about 450 grams, uh, so about a pound. And then you've got what looks like a bike chain, conveyor chain, steel handle, steel all the way, uh, leather cord bound grip and a pommel. Right, whole thing there, uh, 58 centimetres, something like that. So just under two foot long. So I mean, because... it is a flail, isn't it? But it's, it's like an enhanced flail. Yeah, you sent me the picture. I took one look at that and I just went, modern industrial, Definitely a fake, not interested in it. Matt, sorry, you missed the boat. <laughs> and I paid it no more attention. Ah. And then I was looking through a 1430s book by a guy called Mariana Tackler, and he had a whole page of different chain link types like this, duplex, simplex, ones with gaps in, ones without gaps. And I just went, ah, interesting. Wow. I found the original piece of paper that you sent me and it goes into describing what it was about. This is a replica of a piece that was sold through the Herman Historica uh, auction house which has a really good reputation for quality and real weapons so I don't doubt the provenance of it actually in fact I just dismissed it from the image first of all which I shouldn't have done 1520s 1530s German I've sized it according to their pictures I've scaled it really quite carefully so I think we can say what I've done is pretty true to weight pretty true to size I'm going to hand back to Matt because you are the expert on how to use these things and explain why the chain is like this. <laughs> so Mendoza does talk about a, a chain which is designed perhaps like this to prevent it from tangling itself. Um, but this has some other implications because of course this can only flex in one plane. Oh well it can flex a little bit from side to side but just like a bicycle chain or a motorbike chain it is designed to really only go one way which means that like a blade this thing can, will only want to swing that way. It cannot swing sideways. It feels more akin to swinging a blade, which has mm. edge alignment to it. And you can feel which way it's supposed to go. You, if you try and swing it the other way, yeah. well, that would happen. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, it can tangle itself. <laughs> but, the, but the other thing that, that what those words were explaining was that when you have a chain like this, that isn't completely free flowing in all respects. What it allows you to do is you can now control the weapon in slightly different ways. Yeah. And, and that's what the text is also saying is yeah. that it allows you different levels of control to a purely chain mace, if you see what The I mean. other thing, of course, is the fact that Mendoza was talking about it not entangling itself or, or considerations about the, the construction of the chain at all suggests yeah. that with other flails, there maybe were issues with this. The head on this one is interesting as well, isn't it? Because it's it's a cube with the corners cut off, basically, isn't D &D it? D&D dice. <laughs> yeah, is it a D20? Simple question. Yeah. Do you like it? I actually really do, yeah. That's that's what that's one of the nicest fla flails I've ever held, of, of this kind of yeah. ball and chain arrangement. Um, and so long as you're holding it one-handed, your hand's not at any yeah. real risk. And to be honest, because it's quite a top-heavy type of swinging weapon, mm. I'd probably just nestle my hand down right at the bottom next to the pommel. It's actually quite wieldable. It's, yeah, it's a nice weight and balance to it. It feels like it's got good reach on it, like you can really hit 
It'd be fun to go at someone's kneecap with that. <laughs> Did that feel good? It, it, it seems to have just disappeared. <laughs> you enjoying yourself? <laughs> I would not want to be hit by that at all. all right, shall I try and wrap the chain around? I'm good. I imagine that wrapping around an arm or it's, something. It's completely breaking the wood on the back. Is it? So a bit like we found with the shield. Yeah. It's it's almost accelerating Whipping it. Whipping around. Yeah. And if you so if you were aiming at someone's helmet or head, and you hit the side of their head with the chain, the ball would hit them in the back. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, does that come into the devastating category? <laughs> Wow. I've got a sparring version, or actually I've got two. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So... Well, I probably have some people who'd be very keen to try those that's, out that's on each other. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> so, bear in mind, of course, he's got a, a big reach advantage with the spear, mm. but he has got his, his spare hand to grab with. He's actually left-handed, so... Yeah. That'll be a little bit different for him to... Oh, he switched hands? Oh, no, he's just it. let... Oh, he had, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's interesting as well, with the Mendoza, he's talking about the big circles, same with the Manton, same with the Manuel, is just keeping people well away. I mean, I'm thinking here that he should be... He should be making an area that's difficult for the spear to get through. Well, so an interesting happened, uh, thing yeah. happened because Jordan defended the spear thrust purely with his spare hand and then tried to strike back with the flower, but he wasn't quite close enough to hit. You can just defend it with your hand. You can just push the thrust aside. Oh, yeah, that was interesting because it was, lapped over. That would have taken his fingers off, I think. Did the plane of the movement yeah. of, of the flail. Ah. Oh! oh. <laughs> ouch, ouch. He's looking for that opportunity, but I think the, the weapon will be so slow to bring on target yeah. that the opportunity will be gone. Oh, oh. Oh, and again. interesting, yeah. Oh, so we're swapping out weapons now. <laughs> so Hungarian Sabre, kind of a later uh, descendant of the Mesa, you could say. I was going to say the Sabre has a reach advantage, but I don't think it does. I think they're Not a similar really. reach now. Mm. You know what I'd like to see, though? I'd like to see that flail just coming round and round and round, just seeing if the Sabre can even really get in. Yeah. Ooh. It's uh, similar to fighting something with a montante in the same sort of drills. Yeah. It's a big circular motion to try to find an opening long enough where I can actually do something. Yeah. Right, so, new pair of people, long sword versus flail this time. Remember, right. this flail can hit pretty hard, so be quite cautious with the blows. <laughs> Ah, oh, interesting. Oh, he instinctively unwrapped it when it mm. got caught up. Oh! <laughs> I tell you what I am seeing, though, is... Fear. Is, yes. is yeah, the, the yeah. he doesn't want to be hit by there it, was, yeah. I think it was the second strike there on the longsword blade. It wrapped around near the hilt. So there was an interesting moment there where his flail ended up spent as we'd say here and you've got to pull it back before you can really do anything mm. with it again and in that time the longsword is still potent because you can just thrust or do a draw cut with it so that was an example of a moment where the longsword is definitely a, a more dangerous weapon than the flail is assuming they're unarmored um. oh nice oh Oh, Ooh. yeah, yeah. But yeah, that, again, that came over the top. I think, this, I think what I saw was the shaft hit the blade and then the rest of the chain link came in and hit his arm on the way through. Oh, oh. <laughs> in the face. <laughs> Can I give Stephen a, start, something to try that we haven't seen yet? Because yeah. I think they should work well. Mm. Okay, I, what I told Stephen to do was to try and get his opponent in the leg 
and so to try and snipe down to the legs so to faint high and then to hit down oh and there we go <laughs> oh radical oh oh nice interesting tactics okay oh new toy <laughs> Oh, there we go. It's good we've got a backup. <laughs> There's quite a lot of wariness mm. between both of them. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good solid hit. Well, that said it all. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you very much, guys, because, you know, we can't, we can't do our work without you, really, in that sense. What did you think of it? Give us 30 uh, seconds on yeah, what you think. Really, I find it quite difficult to use. Uh, Matt at one point told me to try doing a leg strike. So all I the problem is to do a leg strike, you have to faint high. And it was almost impossible to do a convincing faint without committing mm. to it and then to get it down. Blame so maybe there's down. a way of doing it, but mechanically you need to do it in a slightly different way. You need to set it up differently. Yeah, and, you know, Mendoza's awesome. doing continuous motions around, so maybe you need to follow through with it and then come down low or something you know yeah. what i got from it was really just needing to keep keep it moving yeah. keep that swing up keep that momentum up because at the end of it my arm was getting a bit tired and my grip was gone a couple of blows in the forearm you know, oh. and it was beginning to be difficult for me to keep it moving from from a shoulder position you can't really fire straight out you've got to go over a bit to mm. it feels like that mm. it'd be good yeah. to experiment that a bit more but you feel as though you've got to bring it up first before you can bring it down rather than go straight forward and punch with it. I think everyone here found the tiring factor a thing, didn't you? It was yes. a little bit difficult. Although I did notice the spying versions didn't have such big pommels as theirs. No, I've, w I've put some lead in to weight them. But yeah, yes. and something I noticed swinging this around was having that big pommel there was really, really vital, yeah. So if you want to strike quickly with it, you kind of had to sort of pre-cock it. I think some of the best... Uh, hits that I got for you mm. involved me sort of almost yeah. cocking the hand and then just being able to flick yeah. the stuff. We're watching forward. you experiment with Yeah, it, and that you? was really interesting. And, and for me, there were some parallels there with how I've seen people using nunchucks yes. as well. And, yeah. and yourself? Uh, what I found, I tried, to, I tried to keep it moving and I tried to play with the distance when I was moved moved it and it out of distance. I tried to keep it moving close to my body, leaning back, having my opponent cut closer, and when I see an opening or, or an opponent change uh, guard, I try to come out, yeah. uh, lean forward, step forward, or yeah. punch out, yeah. arms forward, and I was able to get, usually get him or get somewhere. I don't know whether you all perceived this, but when you were all using a sword against this, you all looked very cautious. And I think because you all knew... I was trying to catch the flail in the sword. Right, okay. And then once it's wrapped up, his momentum's gone. Right. So I was trying to just follow through. Okay, and okay. Definitely one uh, characteristic I found fighting the swords, and I think lots of other people found it, was you end up using the half to block so you mm. end up striking with the tip of the haft while letting the fl the ball of the flail go past go past yeah. so instead of swinging and your aim point being mm. so coming the around the back extension yeah. like with the shield yeah you make some beautiful rondel daggers with studs in the handle thank you very much studs on the handle of that would make a difference because i found it was slowly slipping I, out I of my hand. Did, I did as well. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Studs on the handle would really help with that grip. Thank you very much and uh, well Matt and Lucy Easton Fight Camp. Uh, thank you all. Um, thank you Todd for bringing this wonderful creation. Bit of weird. I love it. <laughs> oh, it's bonkers isn't it? If Mad Max had a mace that would have been it. Yeah yeah absolutely. Yeah. It's industrial meets medieval. I love, love it. it.